about your residency because before you got signed mm -hmm. to Ironworks, you have been a musician all your, you know, for mm -hmm. years, all your life basically. Mm -hmm. And you're from Long Beach, California, mm -hmm. and you had a residency at the Gypsy Lounge for yes. about two years. Yes. And and let's talk about that and the local scene here. Um, basically, it was uh, Tuesday nights were empty, and um, uh, the owner, Mike Concepcion, a great club owner, uh, didn't know me from Adam, and just basically I, I walked up to him and asked if uh, if I could play, do a residency there every once a week, and he gave me Tuesday nights. He goes, well, nobody's showing up on Tuesday, so if you can do something with that, you're, you can have it. And I didn't really think much of it. I thought he'll probably let me do this for about three weeks before he he gets wise to the fact that, you know, he doesn't need me there. You know, I I shouldn't be taking up a slot at his club. But uh, it actually built very slowly. It built and it became a very happening night. And um, I learned a lot because I would have a lot of great musicians come in and sit in with me. And for the most part, I just do like a singer songwriter evening and play whatever I wanted to. You know, I. I'd show up. It was up. your own night. It was yeah. my night. I'd play sitar for an hour if I felt like it, and that would be that. Or I'd work on a song that I'd written that morning. And it, no matter what happened to me in my life, whether it was like up or down, I would I would be there every Tuesday night, and that was like really important for me. And you built a following there built over a, those two years. I yeah. mean, you started out like, hey, maybe two people in the crowd. You never know. Well, it was. It was the bartender <laughs> and one friend that would come see me play. <laughs> <laughs> and then it turned out to be, you know, just through word of mouth and very organic. It turned into a very cool place. And then other artists who were amazing um, wanted to uh, belong to that evening as well. And I was like, wow, that's great. Built a really nice little thing. Um, so it was really fun while it lasted. And is that where Jude Cole and Kiefer Sutherland came to see you one night and, and were very impressed with you? And then, wow. We Actually, you. it wasn't. Um, I remember. Too bad. That was my whole good lead. Yeah, in there. it was a good lead into it. <laughs> but you know, it was very similar. In, in Long Beach, there was these annual once a month parties going on where a community of musicians would get together and um, just kind of play. You know, it'd be like eleven, twelve different artists or bands from all different styles just playing, and uh, they were very underground parties. Um, you know, just. Uh, you know, word of mouth kind of parties, and uh, but fun nonetheless. And we had a really good space for him. And um, I started to just hop, uh, tag along in those parties and play a little set here and there. And I played like I think two thirty in the morning. Friend of Kiefer and Jude's came and saw me play, who wasn't even supposed to be there. I wasn't supposed to be there, and it just worked out really well. Hey, it was fate. That's it was, fate, right? Right that's there. That's what I'm thinking. I believe that. Cool. And look at you now. You're the number one artist on Ironworks, of course. Yep. Yep. And is Kiefer around? Who knows? Where is that guy? <laughs> or Jude, know. you know? No. They're both we'll working. We'll get them on Music Plus soon, you know? Yeah. After they saw you play live by chance at the party, how did it end up to a recording contract? Mm. Came in here. I remember they, their friend actually kept calling me to come in here. And I think for like almost two months, and like, I you know when you're playing music, a lot of people approach you and talk, say, hey, you know, I have this, I can hook you up here. And I, after a while, you start not listening. You just, okay, thanks, and then yeah, you they just promise go, you the world. Then you go mm -hmm. home, you know. So, I, I remember he he was so persistent that I finally said, all right, I'll go, and I came. At the time, I was talking to a few different people about making a record, and. Uh, but this was a really nice fit here. Uh, they were interested in making a record I wanted to make, and that, that's what that's what captured me. Yeah. And so you have total control as an artist being with Ironworks. You know, you'd like to think you always have total control, <laughs> but there's always a, uh, you know, for the most part, yes. No, I do. Ha I do artistically have control over this thing, uh, and I've had an amazing uh, learning experience as well. I've learned a lot. You don't always, um, you think you know exactly what you want and, and you're sometimes you're blessed with people who actually can show you uh, what you really want, you know. And uh, uh, Jude Cole was very instrumental in uh, showing me how just to really form a record, you know, because mm -hmm. I've, I'm mostly uh, an artist who kind of like, um, you know, spur of the moment, 
what I'm thinking at the time is what is happening. And he really focused it and turned it into a record, which I was happy to sit and watch and and uh, enjoy that process. Yeah. Yeah, because he produced this. Not he only is it. Ironworks his label, you know, with right. Kiefer Sutherland, but he's right. a producer. Correct. And he really helped you come together with with your to make a record. Yeah. Your concept of the CD yeah. and direction. Absolutely. You did an Icelandic tour. Mm -hmm. A lot of great footage that I, I saw. And um, how was that experience? I, I know you were on the road with Kiefer. Mm -hmm. Was he like your tour manager? He was our tour manager. Tour manager? <laughs> I sh that's a good way to put. It. He was acting as our tour manager. <laughs> Um, he did a really good job, actually. He got us to the gigs. He allowed for uh, a director, Manu Boyer, to come along and film. Um, and Manu pretty much captured um, us, uh, you know, running to venues and getting into cars and um, getting into arguments and playing music live and all the ups and downs of uh, trying to figure this whole thing out. So it's it's uh it's pretty um funny to watch us uh go through this and uh fall on our faces at times and uh every once in a while, you know, uh have a have small victories here and there along the way. Uh and were you guys there on New Year's Eve? Because you guys are shooting some fireworks. And I think I even see an actual clip of Kiefer and you shooting this firework. Yeah. Is it's, that New Year's Eve? Yeah, that's a great <laughs> clip because, I love it. Uh, you know, we act so tough. But <laughs> as soon as we lit the, the fuse on the firecracker, we ran back as fast as we could from it. That's classic. Classic shower. Right yeah, and, and Mr. 24. Yeah. Right? That is right? character. <laughs> we were like, okay, it's lit. We better run. And we did. <laughs> How long was that that Icelandic tour? Did you also tour other European cities? Um, uh, that first time out that you're talking about, I just uh, went on a little mini tour acoustic, and yeah, we just toured to some European um, places. Um, I w we were only in Iceland for two weeks at that point and played about three or four shows there acoustic until this last year where we finally took the band, um, the full band and a crew there. I want to talk about another track on the CD, mm -hmm. Bus Ride. Mm -hmm. You guys should play that track over and over and over. Cool. Like 10 times in a row I could listen to that song uh, and, thank you. and never get tired of it. Thank you. It takes me on a journey. So Great. Let's talk about your writing process behind that track, Bus Ride. Um, you know, basically, <clears throat> sometimes I just like to, in my mind when I'm writing, <clears throat> I have a, a picture in my head. <clears throat> of something I'm trying to relate and um, you know while I was writing that it, it was just a moment that happened to me when I was uh, using the public transportation system in Long Beach <laughs> and um, you know didn't have a car still don't have a car you don't looking for one Rocco if you That's know any good deals <laughs> um, but I would take the bus quite a bit <clears throat> and uh, you know, you meet a lot of crazy uh, and interesting characters on the public True. transportation, especially here in the West Coast. In the East Coast, it's 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 uh, you know very um, yeah. Know, I'm from New York City, so okay. I know very well. But over difference. here, <laughs> if you take the bus, it's it's weird. You know, you're almost like um, you you're eclectic. There's no doubt about it. And you know, so. To see somebody that you're interested in, or see somebody that's kind of capturing you for a bit, on over here, you're like, why, why is she on the bus? It really doesn't make much sense to me. <clears throat> and, and you're like, uh, come home with me. That's yeah, the you know, it's, it's just like, one of those feelings. Come home to my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sometimes you see somebody, and it doesn't. For me, it doesn't always have to be a girl. Just, just maybe a, a child or somebody. They're so beautiful um, that it almost hurts a bit. You know, and uh, that was the, one of the feelings I had with with that song. It like it it kind of stabbed me a bit that I didn't have the opportunity to know that person. Yeah. So then you when you left the bus, you just got off at your stop, and that was it. You never saw that woman again. No, never again. No. And, and just, look, a great song that it turned into. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and it's funny. It's like you, you think you're talking about a girl, but you know, and then you realize you start looking at what you wrote and you realize it was about maybe even something more um you know a place you visited that meant a lot to you you know uh, 
I don't know. It's all mixed up. It's all these yeah. all these ghosts that kind of like mix up together and they become whatever whatever the song manifests itself into. You know. No, that's why bus ride. When I first heard that song, because mm -hmm. it changes, like you're saying, it brings me back. It makes me reminisce about my life in general, and it brought me back to my travels in Europe. That was the first time oh, I, I, I listened to that song. Just traveling, getting away, and just looking out the window. Oh, well done. Good. <laughs> Purpose served. That's really good. <laughs> so, no, it, it could metamorphosizes into something entirely different. That's why I said you can listen to that song a million times, and I think it'll bring back different memories every time. Ah, uh, that's you great. Touched me. Oh, that was the whole purpose. 